you know that. Well, hello and welcome to this program of the University of Arkansas Small Business Technology and Development Center. We are so pleased to be able to bring you these educational programs to help support small businesses. Please be advised that we will be recording this conversation for ASB TDC educational purposes. You will be able to access these recordings and our part, part, past workshops and webinars at our website, and we will be posting that within the chat box throughout this presentation. I'll introduce Rachel momentarily, but first I'd like to introduce us and tell you a little bit about ASB TDC. I'm Chris Case, a specialty consultant with the Small Business Center. And if you don't already know about the Small Business Development Center, it's a one-stop shop for startups and existing small businesses. We are associated with the University of Arkansas and affiliated with the SBA and statewide ASB TDC, as well as a nationwide network of more than 1,000 small business centers. Locally, we offer complimentary one-on-one -on -one consulting and programs just like this one, covering the relevant topics for business owners. And if you're not already a client, we would love, love for you to be a client. And you can visit us at sbtdc.uark.edu. Today, we're bringing you three free data sources your business, your small business needs now. So that's why I wanna make sure I get the recording to Rachel. We love this format because it gives you the opportunity to really hear from the experts and ask questions and work through whatever challenges your small businesses are happening or that are happening. Please feel free. You can post your questions throughout this presentation in the chat box. Rachel will be stopping momentarily each section to, to answer some questions that you may have. We will also answer questions at the end of the session. So please make sure that you save up questions for then too. We will get, we'll be monitoring that very closely. Now, if you want to ask um, anonymous questions, the Q&A is the way to go there. Just go ahead and um, ask your questions in the Q&A um, box. While we're getting to know Rachel a little bit more, we want to get to know you. So make sure that you post in the chat box the, the name of your business, the industry you're in, and then even the name that you're registered in under so we can make sure to get you all the material. Well, without further ado or hesitation, Rachel, I'm going to hand this over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel. Um, I'm going to have you guys on my big screen so I can watch chat. So if you're not making eye contact, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so I will go ahead and share my screen. Eight. Okay. Put you guys back over here. Well, it's blocking the chat. So if anything comes through, you guys can let me know. Um, yep, I'll watch it. Okay, perfect. So today we're talking about three free data sources that your small business needs now. It's actually four. I snuck another one in there, but it's still free. Um, so my name is Rachel. I'm a consultant with the center. Um, a lot of my focus is in digital marketing um, and really optimizing um, sources to save you money. So um, just a little bit about me. I'm a Northwest Arkansas native. I was born here, moved around a lot, and I've been back for about 10 years. Um, I just really love the area. I love being outside and being able to enjoy everything that um, we have here. Um, I also really love the opportunity to work with small businesses. I think this area is so unique in the way that we are very concentrated with entrepreneurs, and um, there's just so much opportunity for growth when it comes to that. Um, these are my dogs. They're extremely cute and also some of my best co-workers. Um, and then just a little bit about my professional side. So like I said, digital marketing, I kind of got into the back end side of digital marketing um, during an internship a while back. No one really wanted to do the work that I was interested in, which was pretty convenient. Um, so I'm not as great at the creative side. Like I do not see visuals when it comes to like, this would look beautiful if we had this. My brain is very back end. Um, I love analyzing numbers and saying, okay, we're looking at X, Y, Z. This is how we can inform our marketing strategies based on that. Um, alongside that, it naturally is budget optimization. So if we're informed about what our numbers are saying, we can normally make better decisions with our budget on where to spend or where not to spend. And then SEO, which is search engine optimization. These all kind of go together, very research-based, lots of numbers. Um, so an overview of today, um, 
these, all these data sources are free and they're easy to install based on your web platforms. If you don't have your website set up, um, when you're in the process of getting that set up, these are just great things to start and give you a base level um, of data. So today we'll be talking about Google Search Console, Google Analytics, our Facebook Pixels, and Google My Business Insights. Um, so I like these platforms because they're free. You're gonna hear me say free a lot because I think free is very powerful, especially for small businesses. Um, you, these are tools for you guys and they don't cost anything. So um, all of these sources add another layer of understanding to help you make informed decisions about your marketing efforts. Um, you guys probably recognize this guy on the slide. Um, so data can feel overwhelming and why is that? It's hard to know where to start. Um, you have a lot going on as a small business owner. And then when you start seeing all these numbers come in, you know, how do we break that down in a way that's easy to understand? What should we even pay attention to? Um, you know, you can see all these numbers and just not even know kind of what to narrow in on to understand what's important. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today is yes, there's unlimited data and resources and a million things you can be doing all the time. But if we can just start with a few different areas, we can, you can really start training your brain and your business to think in a way that is really beneficial to your efforts. Um, some people might have an aversion to data because it doesn't seem as creative. Um, you know, it doesn't look as pretty. There's graphs and charts, but, you know, not as exciting if you really love the design aspect of business. But hopefully we can get very excited about data in this presentation. Um, and then, you know, in the back of our minds, data breaches like our friend Mark Zuckerberg um, experience with Facebook can maybe give us a negative context on how we can use data in a positive way. Um, I think a lot of the times the word data feels intrusive. Um, people, data definitely gets misused, but in the sources that we're talking about today, you are using it to give your customers a better customer experience and you're not, you know, you're not invading their privacy in any way. So the good news is you're already thinking about data analytics, whether you know it or not. Um, you know, you're always thinking like, okay, we had a lot more foot traffic in the store today. I wonder why that's happening. So all these, all these questions, all these things you have going in your brain, when we have these resources and these platforms set up with our websites and um, other marketing sources, we can kind of help validate these conclusions that we might be drawing in our minds or just say, I think this might be happening. We can go to the numbers and understand that we are correct or maybe there's a few things we can fine tune to make um, those experiences better. Um, I see a lot of, you know, a lot of businesses try new things all the time, which is amazing, but it's when we're lacking time, it's often that checking in to see if things are working that we neglect. And so these are just sources that help you say, I did this, now I need to go back and check on the results so I know how to move forward in my next marketing campaign, for example. Um, and it just helps you feel confident. If you do something, it works, that's great. We want that win. We want our little confidence boost for the day. Um, and these data sources are there when you need them. It's not something you have to check all of the time. If you have them installed, they're running in the background and gathering everything for you. So when you're ready to look at it, they're there. Um, so I, I prefer doing like bi-weekly or monthly reporting just so I understand what's going on with my um, marketing campaigns, but it's up to you. Find out what works for you if you start with quarterly um, we're going to talk about benchmarking in a minute, but just giving you insight to your business. Um, we're all tired of hearing about COVID, but we're probably going to talk about it forever because it forced a lot of change, especially for small businesses. Consumer habits are completely different, and the shutdown changed how customers could interact with businesses, not just how they chose to. Um, storefronts weren't open. So many small businesses had to go online that had never been online before. Also customers' expectations of a website honestly changed. As long as you could give them 
the products and tell them what you have to offer, I think they dropped a little in my perspective. You know, not everything had to be beautiful and amazing. It's just like, if I want to go pick something up from the store, can I place a curbside pickup order successfully? Great. So I think a lot of small business owners, while you already had so much going on, you're also adding this entire new layer of having to be online um, in order to meet customers wherever they are. So because of this, I'm really encouraging clients to um, just at least have these data sources running because it's a great time to build benchmarks for yourself. And, um, you know, over 2020, you might have seen your online interactions really increase compared to other years. Maybe you kind of had an e-commerce site or side to your business. That was a second thought. It wasn't your primary source of revenue, but it really jumped during 2020. And then maybe 2021, you start seeing those numbers go down a little bit. We want to understand what's happening. So maybe this year your in-store traffic, your foot traffic is up, but your online traffic is down a little bit. And so by benchmarking, we can understand that's okay where our revenue is still increasing, but we wanna understand where to put our marketing efforts based on the traffic. Um, so we always just wanna be aware of those changes and either be able to validate our thoughts about them or change the trajectory of something that we're doing. So benchmarking, like I said, it's hard. It's just creating reference points. So you guys are doing this with every other part. You're looking at your um, P&Ls from last year and you're forecasting. You do this all the time. We're just also gonna do this with our marketing analytics. So it's hard to understand what's going on by looking at a metric from just a day or a week or a month. We look at something, we say, okay, 600 page views, that probably looks good. 600 is not a small number, but 600 compared to what? Is 600 high compared to last week or is 600 low compared to last week or month or year even? Um, so we'll get into that. I'll show you guys some ways that you can do that very easily in these platforms. Um, and then, yeah, just understanding what success looks like or where there's room for improvement. So the first platform we're gonna look at today is Google Search Console. Um, so Google defines it as tools and reports to help you measure your site search traffic and performance, fix issues and make your site shine in Google search results. So Google Search Console is where you want to make sure that you've submitted your sitemap. Um, if you don't submit your sitemap, then Google doesn't know that it needs to be paying attention to your website, basically. It's very easy to do. Um, and like I said, we're gonna send out a guide after this and we'll, it'll have links to everything, instructions to everything. Um, so it'll walk you guys through it very easily. And this allows you to understand your keywords um, that users are using to find your site. So this is important because when we start getting into SEO, which isn't today, but in future presentations, your ideal keyword is not always your customer's ideal keyword. So what we mean by that is oftentimes we will use an industry term that our customers actually aren't using. Um, so an example of like protein bars, that's the term that we use to find a protein bar that we want. Say that you, you own a protein bar company and you want to make it sound more exciting. So you start calling it a health food nut bar. No one is searching for that. So you're not going to come up for that. So that's where we really want to understand the customer's perspective because at the end of the day, they're the ones who need to find us um, to purchase our products or services. Um, so you can also view performance metrics. And um, so how is your site performing? You know, what, how do you rank? What are these keywords? Do you have any issues with your URLs? Um, Google will tell you all of this. So it's really, it's really a great tool. Um, again, it allows detailed keyword information, more detailed than Google Analytics. So oftentimes we'll look into this later, but you'll have your organic um, source traffic on Google Analytics. And many times it will say unknown. So if we can kind of compare Google Analytics and Search Console together, um, it can give us a lot of insight. So this is kind of an example. I've changed numbers and everything to blind it. So this isn't real data, but this is what your Google Search Console account would look like if you logged into it. 
Um, so we can view total clicks. This is how many people click on your links from a Google search. Your impressions, how many people view the listing. Um, your click-through rate is your impressions um, to clicks and then your average position. So how are you measuring up? We wanna be in top positions basically. So a lot of times when you log in, these queries are what I was referring to as keywords. These are searches that people are putting into Google and your business is coming up and they're clicking. So most businesses will see their main top queries as business name. So some variation of that, um, which is great. What does that tell us? That tells us that you have some type of word of mouth um, influence going. You know, people know your name, maybe they're driving by your business and they go to Google it to find out more. That's awesome, people are finding you. Where that can inform our decisions later is, you know, okay, we see a lot of people find us by our business name, but now we want people to find us from search keywords. So say we're a bakery and we in Fayetteville. So we want to come up when people search birthday cake near me, something like that versus just the name of our bakery. Um, to the left are some different tools that you can click around and look at, but URL inspection is really neat. It will tell you if there are any errors on your URLs and how to fix them. Um, coverage of sitemap is what I was referring to, to um, submit your sitemap to Google Search Console. And um, it's just a really neat tool. Does anyone have any questions about Search Console while we're here? Rachel, we don't have any questions popping okay. up yet, but um, just to kind of um, summarize, if it's my business and I want to see what keywords people are searching and finding me, I, I look under queries and that's mm -hmm. where I can find them. Okay. Yeah. So that can and, help me with anything in the future. Yeah. And so when we start talking about SEO later on, we'll say, oh, actually, like we thought a lot of people came to us for birthday cakes, but actually a lot of people are searching for croissants and they're act like we're actually getting a lot of traffic for croissants and so then maybe we want to say let's run a marketing campaign specific to that like we're seeing something in the market go on that people are very interested in this topic right now let's you know um position our content in that way so we we are thinking about the customer before they know that we're even serving a need or a want basically okay um, great and we do have a question and i, I think yep. um if I read it right, how do I navigate to Google Console? Yes, so um, again, in that guide, I'll send you all the links, but you can Google, it's funny, you just Google, Google Search Console. <laughs> There's a ton of resources on it, and it Google does a very good job of just walking you through the process. Um, and then I put links and instructions in that guide as well. So basically you just start an account and, or sign up for an account. If you already have an account, you can log in. And um, in that guide, it'll kind of walk you through a few things you can check to make sure your site map has been submitted and everything. But um, once you sign into your account, Google kind of prompts you to say, do X, Y, Z. Um, and there's a ton of resources online too, from YouTube videos to articles. Like they, in my opinion, make it pretty user-friendly um, to get into this account. Okay, great. And before we move on to the next section, just one more question. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon makes um, antler lamps, which I think is extremely cool. So how would he list that? Yes, so um, that's kind of getting into SEO, which I have an upcoming presentation on. Um, and so I'm not going to get too into that. I will add some stuff, Brandon, in the guide just to walk you through it, because I think if I talk about it right now, people are really going to drop off. Yeah, um, don't, don't give it away. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but basically how you would use it is say, say you set up your website and um, we, we've we done all this research for our keywords and then we make sure that our Google search console is set up, our site map has been submitted. Um, we'll start seeing these queries. And so this basically validates that the SEO requirements that we've set on your product pages and your website are working and that people are finding you for antler lamps or custom lamps or you know nature inspired lamps, stuff like that. 
Um, a lot of in Google Search Console helps you validate a lot um, so that you know if you need to update keywords or maybe, maybe people are referring to your lamps in a different way than you do. So we might want to have antler lamps and deer antler lamps or something like that, different variations of the keyword for the product. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. The next platform we're going to look at is Google Analytics. Um, and Google defines these as the tools you need to better understand your customers. So there's a lot of data that comes with Google Analytics and I, um, you know, you can use these in addition to your web platform or your POS insights. So I saw someone using Shopify. Um, Shopify is pretty good about giving you website traffic analytics um, and your marketing insights. But I like using Google Analytics as just an added layer of kind of security and understanding. So, you know, if you moved off of Shopify for your website at some point, um, but you've always had your URL on Google Analytics, your traffic, you will always have that as a record. Um, and it just gives different layers of insights than your web um, platform insights use. So I like using those in tandem. Um, so insights that we like to look at in Google Analytics are audience, and I'm going to show examples of all these and show you guys what it would look like to click around, um, but audience overview, acquisition overview, behavior overview, and pages reports. So this is an example of an audience overview. Um, in the guide, I share a glossary of what all of these terms mean, so I'm not going to get into them too much today, but basically this is what people are doing on our website. Users or how many people are coming to our website, new users, um, you know, pretty standard new people coming to our website. Um, so I like looking at this metric because we want to see like in this example, which in all the examples I'm using, I've changed numbers every, these, this is not real, but um, we want like, see how we have a lot of new visitors here. That's great. That tells us that people are finding our website. Maybe this is a new website, a new business. So we know that this traffic is valuable. Um, returning visitors, we can see that this is just a week of data. I'll show you guys what a comparison looks like, but we can see that um, you know people are coming back to our site, which is great. So how can we kind of balance keeping new people coming and keeping our returning visitors um, returning visitors are going to be really important when it comes to e-commerce. So what can we do to keep our customers coming back when it comes to referral programs or, um, you know, maybe we give them little discounts every once in a while. How do we treat our current customers really well so that they continue to buy through our website versus a competitor or someone who, you know, sells a similar service or product to us? Um, so these are some, this is just one kind of overview and on the left, you can see everything. Again, in that guide, it'll kind of walk you through. I have a link there to um, like a Google Analytics for Beginners guide and there's tons of videos and resources there. Um, but this is where I wanna talk about benchmarking. So you can see back here, okay, 683, that seems pretty good. You know, 683 is a good number. It's higher than zero, looks good to me. But when we compare it to the week before, um, which I used two examples from this, but you know our page views are actually way up. So if we were just looking at a week view, and in this example, it would be 974. Okay, that's good, more than zero, right? But how does that create a reference point for us? Which is why I like looking at either week over week and you just set your, you set a comparison in Google Analytics. There's a little calendar when you log in. Um, so comparing, we can see, actually these numbers are really good. Our page views were up 50%. Um, so then we wanna start thinking in our minds, what did we do this week that really brought people over um, that we weren't doing last week? Did we publish a blog post? Did we partner with an influencer? Did we run an email campaign? Um, maybe we saw that our Instagram blew up and we got 300 new followers. So we can say, you know, we can kind of start drawing these conclusions together um, to understand how our business is performing online. Oops. Um, so acquisition is 
where people are finding you, where are you acquiring users, basically. These will vary depending on your website. Some people have really, really high direct traffic. People know your website, it's been around for a long time. Um, a lot of the times your returning users will use, will be a good amount of your direct traffic. Um, that's someone typing in your URL directly on Google. Social normally pulls from LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, any of the social channels that you're using that, you know, someone's going from Facebook to your website, Google's tracking that. Organic search is people searching for a term in Google. So let's say that this is a fish restaurant and you're going to say, okay, well, people are finding us by Googling fish restaurant in Fayetteville or something. Referral traffic is a lot of those third party links. So um, I see this a lot with like photographers or wedding venues, the referral traffic will be pretty high because they get placed in like blog posts or Yelp roundup, stuff like that. So referral is any um, kind of like third party link that links back to your website. So another view, that's a little blurry, sorry, is a month over month, which is what I like looking at the most. I run monthly reports for um, my clients or any of the work that I'm doing, just because I like to see um, the comparisons in that way. So you can see that in this example, for this week that we're looking at, referral traffic was our main source of traffic to our website. But when we go over here and look at month over month, we actually see that organic search was our first um, main source of acquisition and it's up. So that's awesome. Like, let's say that this example, this business has really been focusing on their SEO. They went and updated all their things maybe two, three months ago and it's starting to really pick up. Um, so we can see that interest is really increasing in this business during this month. So then we wanna go evaluate all the marketing efforts that we made because it's working in some way. Um, so again, creating benchmarks for yourself is just really important. Also, when you're in this, you can go in and click all of this text that's blue. You can, that is all clickable and then it will expand and tell you um, the traffic sources from there. So for example, if you clicked on referral, it would break out the links or the websites that referred traffic to your website from theirs, which is neat. Um, behavior overview is a page report basically. Um, it normally gives you the top 10, but this is really beneficial to understand like if you publish blog posts or anything, understand what pages on your website people are interested in. Um, so let's say this is like a hotel or somewhere that takes reservations, you know, a venue or something like that. Um, in Google Analytics, this backslash number one is your homepage basically. And so we can see that for this account, um, our homepage is our main driver of traffic. People come there first, but a lot of the times, like if you write about a trending topic and your blog post is really optimized, a lot of the times you'll see, you know, your blog post come up in um, your behavior overview for that month. And so that kind of tells us like, people are interested in this topic. Um, I am solving an issue or a problem or a question that someone has. And so I can inform myself like, that is useful to people. Um, what's the next piece of content I can write? to help people um, understand while driving traffic to my website. And again, this is just showing a weak comparison to understand like, you know, 1,144 page views looks good, but compared to what, like it's actually way up in this example. Um, so, you know, was there an event in town? What happened that really drove our page traffic up? That is Google Analytics. Does anyone have questions about that? Yeah, I don't see any questions popping up yet, but Rachel, that is a lot of great information. And um, your guide that you're gonna help or send out to us is gonna be so helpful because, you know, I'm trying to take all this in and it's just, it, it's a lot, but it's, it's really clicking. I mean, this is where you find out 
where you're doing good or, or why, why the why of everything, why you're doing yeah. good or why you're not doing so good. So the why is always the hardest question usually for, for businesses to answer. And this answers that it's just great. Yeah. And yeah, I meant to make this disclaimer at the beginning of the presentation too, but if you don't have this stuff set up, it's okay. It's totally normal. Like it is not bad if you don't have these sources set up, it's just going to give you, once you do, it's just going to give you a new, you know, source of information and knowledge that will be really helpful. And it is a lot of information, but if you, you know, have a little time to do some Google searches and just read through the guide, um, it's a little simpler than it seems. Um, but it's a lot to look at at one time. <laughs> Yeah. And we had a couple of people say, this is the first time that they've seen this and I'm with you. This is the first time I've seen this too. So it, it's going to be great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's like kind of one initiative we've had since I've started at the center is we realize that small businesses are doing all of these things, but when it comes to understanding how it's impacting their business, there's a hole. Um, and so when I'm doing reviews for people, I can do them if I don't have these sources, but the ones who have sources, I can really drill in and say, this is exactly where we need to go with your marketing efforts. I see this from your customers and I see this from your efforts. Like it really pairs together well. Um, and it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's awesome to see it all come together. Sure is great. So Thank you. One, yeah. Is Facebook pixel, um, I'm sure you guys heard about this. If you haven't heard about it, you've experienced it. And we'll talk about an example in a minute. So um, this is an analytics tool that allows you to measure the effectiveness of your advertising by understanding the actions people take on your website. This is all from Facebook because they said it better than I could. Um, so we wanna make sure your ads are shown to the right people, finding new customers or people who have visited a specific page or taken a desired action on your website. I have an example of this in the next slide. To drive more sales, um, like making, you know, we want to, we want to encourage people to make a purchase. The pixel can work a lot for us to do these things. Um, and then measuring the results of your ads. So, you know, better understand the impact of your ads. If you aren't running ads, that's okay. Honestly, through the center right now, we're not advising people to go spend a ton of money on ads if you don't know, if you don't have these tools set up to understand the impact of them. Um, so Facebook pixel is something I tell everyone to set up so that it's running in the background and gathering data um, on your website. So when you are ready to run ads, you can make really informed decisions. Um, a Facebook pixel is how you run retargeting ads to people. So, you know, you're on a website, let's say you're shopping for furniture. You go get on Facebook, Wayfair is hitting you with ads, Strauss and Maine hits you with ads, Pottery Barn, they're all retargeting you based on your actions that you've taken online. Um, and you can do the same things as well. So in the guide, I break that down more. I also included in there just some tips and tricks um, I give our clients to saving money. So in your advertising efforts, um, you know, avoiding automatic placements, Facebook's job is to spend your money quickly. So if we can make informed decisions about our advertising efforts while knowing these little tips and tricks to save us money, um, we can just be more effective in that way. So this is an example. Um, Facebook Pixel is super easy to set up in like Squarespace or Shopify. It's basically just a plug and play, put your number in there. But what you can do is set up these events. Um, and again, and all these numbers are fake. But, you know, page views, view content, add to cart, check out purchase, all these things that are so valuable. So we know how many people view our page and then make it to purchase. If we see a big, like on this example, this is a big drop off. So what can we do with our Facebook advertising to maybe retarget people that we know have viewed our content or we know have added our products to cart, but they haven't made it to check out? What do they need to check out? Maybe we retarget them with an ad that we only pay 50 cents for that offers someone a 10% off coupon. Most of the time for most products, you know, that's a dollar-ish. It's not very much, but it brings someone back. Um, so you guys see that all the time. Hey, your cart is waiting for you. Come back for 10% off, something like that. Um, so this is just an example I put on here of like a custom audience we could build in an ad with a Facebook pixel for someone who's abandoned their cart. So you can say meets these 
parameters basically and it can be running you can set your budgets to anyone who makes it to the cart page but doesn't make it to the checkout page or order complete or thank you page we want to send an ad to them that we set to be valuable that there's more to the facebook pixel again the guide gets into more details but does anyone have any questions about that one Here's a great question because I do know that we have consultants on um, this webinar and um, you and I are both consultants. And mm -hmm. so is this something that is um, more beneficial for a small business or can entrepreneurs um, like you and I use it and benefit from this information? Yeah, you can use it. So um, it's probably more effective for businesses, but as a consultant where we come in and we can view this information through a client's Facebook business manager profile. So when I'm doing reviews, someone gives me access to their Facebook business manager. I go and check everyone's pixels and their events and kind of tell them opportunities that they might have for advertising if they ever want to run them. I'll say, hey, you know, look at your um, view content to checkout ratio. Like might be an opportunity to run a small retargeting campaign with these requirements. Um, if you're willing to. And we kind of talk about budgets and saving money and optimizing in that way. Um, that's how I use it as a consultant. I don't run like for my personal business. I don't run ads for myself for anything. Um, some people do, and this would be useful. Okay. And could it also, because, you know, some of our websites, we have maybe one that has our offerings, maybe another page that has testimonials. Can we see how long people are, are landing if, if they go to our testimonial page, how long they stay there? Yes, that is information you can learn in Google Analytics um, from your pages overview. Yeah. Okay, great. I think that would be very helpful for the entrepreneurs on here. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so the Facebook pixel, the end goal is if you're ever going to do advertising, but what we find is almost everyone who owns a business runs some type of Facebook or Instagram ad at some point. So if we just have this running in the background, we're not losing anything. We're only gaining data for the day that we need to use it. Great. The next is Google My Business Insights. So um, this is your Google My Business profile, but to the left hand side, there's a little area that says insights and that's your analytics that you get from this account. And so um, this is how customers find your listing on search and maps and what they do after they find it. So everyone should have a Google, if you have an active business, everyone should have a Google My Business account, even if you don't have a brick and mortar location. Um, there is no fee to set up a Google My Business account. Um, you can, you, even if you use your home address for your business um, location, you can hide all of that in your profile and um, Google My Business will walk you through that when you go to set it up. But this is really important because a lot of the times, um, this is first the best source for local SEO, which again is our search op engine optimization. So, and it's often quicker and easier to optimize to be found by customers. So when you guys are searching patio restaurants near me, and especially on your phones, these the Google My Business listings are the first to show up so these are really important to have optimized and understand the insights um, because if I find something I want at the top of the screen, I don't need to go below those listings um, to see what else is available on Google. And I'll show you guys this. So again, it's on the left side on the insights tab. Um, there's kind of three sections that they show as insights. This is one of the first ones. So the green is direct traffic. So they search your business name or address blue is discovery so for this example like this is a bit a lot of search traffic um i had someone say to me the other day like we have google my business set up but not a lot's going on over there we don't get a lot of play and i looked and they have a ton of traffic coming from google my business listing um and so just you know letting them understand that this is actually a main source of traffic for you um, we want to make sure that's optimized. We want to make sure your information is up to date all the time. Um, it's really important. So this is the discovery is where we're finding those croissants, Fayetteville, Arkansas, birthday cake. I guess I need to go to a bakery. I guess I'm hungry. Um, but, you know, anything 
local that you're trying to find. You know, a ton of people use this when they travel. So um, I come to Fayetteville for a weekend. I'm out from here. I want to look at bike shops because I want to go mountain biking, bike shops near me, mountain bike rentals near me. These are all things that we can come up for. Um, another thing, search versus maps. So if I'm in Google Maps and I'm searching for something, you know, you get all those listings. I use Google Maps all the time on my phone to just look at stuff, even around Fayetteville. Like we'll want to go eat on the patio for dinner. And I'll be like, maybe there's some place I'm not thinking about. And I'll go look on, you know, Google Maps just because I like the search function there. And then you're listing on search, um, which again is from Google. This is a really cool area that I always tell my clients about because directions requests can kind of give us a roundabout, roundabout data of how far people are willing to travel to visit our business or service. Um, so the little purple highlight will change based on if you pick, I think it's one day, no, one week, one month, one quarter in this little drop dropdown, um, it'll change. You'll see maybe in the week view, like a lot of people were in Bentonville. And then when I switch it to a quarter, most people are concentrated in Fayetteville, but I'll see clients who are like, yeah, our customer base is mainly Rogers and we'll look at their directions requests and it'll actually show that they have a lot of people visiting them from Prairie Grove and West Fork, for example. And so we'll kind of draw a conclusion of people are willing to travel for your service. Um, you know, if you're interested in running an ad campaign or um, expanding your marketing efforts, like maybe like we know customers are down here in Prairie Grove. Let's, you know, maybe run a small campaign down there to increase our customer base past what we think we know, for example. Um, so this is a checklist. Again, all of this will be in the guide, but this is just kind of like, if you do anything after this presentation, you can go and set these sources up, let them run and you can pay attention to them when you want to. Um, does anyone have any questions overall? Great, Rachel. Well, um, Brandon, do we have to be a registered business in order to do that? For a Google My Business listing? Yes. Um, that's a good question. I am not sure. I've never had to think about that before. Um, I can put something in that about the guide. I do know that Google will check your address, and so they send you a postcard to make sure that you are a physical location. Uh, not that you are a physical location, but that you are the one receiving it. They give you a code that you have to verify to set up the account. Um, but I'll double check that. That's a good question. I don't. Okay, great. No. <laughs> yeah, because he's a home-based business. But um, yeah, again, you know, I think that's going to, they're going to be able to find him, which will be great. But whether they'll find him as a business being registered, that's, that's a really good question. Yeah. I've never had to think about that because everyone yeah. I with is a registered business. Good job, Brandon. You've stumped yeah. us. <laughs> Great. Well, actually, I just asked Google and um, you can do it even without, you know, storefront or brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Great, Julie. Thank you. Okay, here's another question. How do I navigate to Facebook Pixel? I um, have run Facebook ads. She, he, this person has run Facebook ads before but how do they navigate to Facebook Pixel? Yes, so Facebook Pixel is under your events manager in your Facebook business manager account. So um, you do have to have, if you've run ads, then you have a Facebook business manager account most likely, but um, it's in there, events manager. Great. Great. Any other questions before we um, sign off? I know we've got time to, to take questions, which would be great, but I, I think your guide is going to be a great um, um, answer to everything, to just all my questions. Um, okay. Yeah, you do. You do not have to be a verified business, Mike said. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and um, say our goodbyes. 
we want to thank you guys all again for joining us. And as a res registrant and attendee of this conversation, you will be emailed a copy of this recording, as well as a brief survey that will help us continue to serve and bring you quality programs. You can also find a full listing of our workshops at sbtdc.uark.edu. And you can also use the QR code right there on your screen to sign up for notifications, or we would love again to have you as a client. We have a lot of services that we offer. Rachel is just one of, of many. We are also posted all over social media. So follow us, please, on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We um, post a lot of really good information out there. So you want to make sure that you follow us on those. But until next time, please stay in touch. Um, shoot any questions our way, and we would love to help you all out. But um, everybody, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>